We've been talking up the top 10 markets for polyethylene film, all based on research conducted by Mastio and Company. I'm Jim Calari, Editorial Director of Plastics Technology. Joining me is Kevin Huntsman, President of Mastio and Company. Kevin, in previous installments of this video series, we've covered construction film, agricultural film, film for meat and poultry, consumer and industrial product liners, shrink film, and t-shirt bags so we're doing the top 10 by my count we got four more to go yes, and sir. number four on the list is sheet and tubing that's a pretty broad category so first that's let's talk about what that covers everything so that, yeah. that that's a great comment on my notes here i just have very broad at the very top yeah yeah i mean in the notes itself from the text it's uh, we have every conceivable market category within this study can use film that originates as sheet and tubing Right. I think that's a good way to really think about it. it we also call it converter film. Right. There's so many. It's just really a multitude of you know, different uses, in-use applications or products. And it's it's the chapter that, given that it's so broad, it also has the largest number of participants yeah. that we interviewed as well. Yeah. So that obviously goes with the fact that, given that it's that broad, there's a lot of people that participate. And it's, it's over 1.2 million pounds right. of polyethylene as well. Right. Now, when we hear the term sheet sometimes in extrusion, we think of the more uh, the thicker types of structures. But this is referred to mostly, I guess, uh, it is technically film, but it becomes sheeting when it's a blown film and it gets slit into into various uh, into various rolls. Absolutely. And that's why this market basically is 100 percent blown film market, yeah. too. Yeah. And when you think about it, so that's I think that's sometimes this becomes a, a, a grab bag or a catch all uh, when we're doing the, the research, just because the can as it being called converter film, they're making the film, they're selling it to a distributor and it's going into some in use market. They're not always sure. of. So right. that's that's why this catches a lot of different spaces. Is it usually a distributor or are they selling it to converter and perhaps know the application? I, I think in many instances they, they do sell it. I think they'd like to go straight to and know the in-use application. But I think there are some instances, especially when you get down to maybe some of the smaller players, it's going to a distributor. I mean, the top five in this market, Jim, controls have a 75% market share. Yeah. So once you get past those top five, it's a lot of small folks, a lot of small yeah. organizations. Yeah. You know, we've talked about again, six of the markets, and we got four to go. It seems that in a lot of them, there are a small group of companies that control um, a large part of the market. And that actually seems to be the case. It seems to be the case where sometimes it's the same company in six or seven different markets. Like, is there any room for a, a smaller company to distinguish itself, say, yeah. in, in this particular market? I think it's tough, and but you're right. I think a lot of the ones that, that control the top market here will control in a lot of other industries as well. There's been so much M&A activity over the years, and, and there's a handful of parties that have been extremely active in that, that have grown their footprint across mm -hmm. these PE film markets, agnostic of markets themselves. Right. But you think there's some small and midsize, uh, for the small and midsize companies, there are opportunities. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to sell more on the value that they offer, the customer service, the, the yeah. more of a handholding type piece. And yeah. in, in and I think too, one of the challenges that we found for the converters in this was was really looking at in the skilled labor component, right. Jim, and, and not just getting skilled labor, but retaining it as right. well. So I think right. as a, maybe a small to mid-sized type company, you can offer some things to employees that the larger ones can't, and yeah. then maybe help differentiate yourself in the marketplace to compete against these very very big companies uh, out there. Yeah. So what do you see in terms of technical trends like on the material side in this in this particular market? It's a great question. I mean, obviously, when you think about this, uh, uh, there's a cross section given the size of it. There's there's linear low, low density, high density. Linear low still is the, the has the lion's share of nearly 60 percent market share within that. Uh, we see a little bit of super hexene in here, but not much. Obviously, metallocene is, is pretty strong in some of these factors here, but the butene being the highest as far as a market share resin within linear low, low density and, and high density, even though they have some share, it's still not significant compared to linear low. I think a lot of times there's not as many technological innovations in this market since it's such a grab bag of so many different things. That may be a place too, Jim, where some of these smaller to mid-sized companies can really differentiate themselves based on 
the, the technology and the engineering that they can offer within the multi-layer films for some of these applications that are much more technical in nature rather than say more of a pure commoditized type product. So a lot of these uh, applications do require uh, multi-layer film products. They do, they do. And when you when you look at that specifically, we look at really it's 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 about 60% monolayer, 40% right. multi-layer. So kind of a 60-40 split. So with that all mostly blown film and then some of the more technical applications required requiring those co-extruded products. Right. And it, on the co-extruded product side, are you seeing uh, nylons and barrier materials, EVOH? Yeah, we are. Matter of fact, when you look at some of the other, uh, we got some different adhesives that we looked at, some uh, EVOH copolymers that were captured in sand nylon. Even though this is a a PE centric film study, we do capture feedback on other resins that they use. And this happened to be the one where there's there's a higher prevalence of some right. of those others rather than some something like a t-shirt bag. Mark. Right, right. Kevin, thank you for your insights thank on you, sheet and tubing market. I just want to remind everyone who is listening to this video that this is a 10 part series. So if you want information on uh, any of the other film markets that we have covered in this series, uh, please go to the Plastics Technology YouTube channel. Uh, you'll also find them on the Plastics Technology LinkedIn channel and on my personal LinkedIn channel, uh, Jim Larry. Kevin, thanks very much. Talk soon. All right. Thank you, Jim.